All right, guys, proximity sensor lab number seven. This one's going to be looking at uh, the M12 capacitive prox sensor. So this one's using, again, our Festo didactic trainers. Um, the application that they've given here is uh, we're detecting the rungs on a ladder. Not mostly, not the, you know, the best example, but whatever, that's the one they've uh, chosen. So they've got capacitive sensors on each of the rungs here. Uh, we know now that these guys would have to be jammed right up against here because the max sensing distance on these guys is like half an inch to an inch. Uh, but any change in dielectric is going to trip these guys off. So let's keep going here. And we'll look at the components that uh, we need. So we need uh, the M12 proximity switch. Uh, if you're looking at the back end, we need the 548651, or just look on the side of the capacitive sensor, and you'll see that I put a sticker on there to tell you which one uh, you need. Uh, there's a small screwdriver in your tackle box. You're going to grab that, the positioning slide, and our 24-volt DC power supply. In our tackle box, we're going to use numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so 5 through 10. And then we're going to use uh, 16 and 17. 16 is your black plastic, and 17 is a piece of wood. Okay, once you guys have those guys, uh, then we're going to mount the uh, the unit on the actual aluminum uh, plate. So let me show you how to do that, and then we'll go through our wiring. All right, guys, these are the three components we need to start off with. We need to grab our light box. We need to grab our positioning slide. Uh, if you're a teacher, you'll notice that We've had to replace this over time as the students use it. They're going to end up wiping off the measurements on there, so you can just print those off and then just tape them on uh, as they get destroyed. We also use the digital calipers from Festo, but we found that with different uh, components, like this guy right here, or the plastic pieces, the plastic pieces slide in nicely to uh, this positioning slide, but with the digital calipers, they are. I can just see what I'm doing. With the digital calipers, they get jammed in there, and you're going to have to use uh, you know, a piece of pliers to, uh, to get them out. So we're going to use these posi this positioning slide, guys, and this guy right here. So this is our capacitive sensor. We can tell that it is our capacitive sensor because it says capacitive sensor right on the side there. If you don't have one or the, that um, sickum has uh, come off, then look on the back here. And then you'll be able to match up the part number to what we had on our lab there. So we need 548651. Actually, you can see here that this guy looks almost identical to the inductive sensor that we looked at before. All right, so this is an M12 capacitive sensor, cylindrical housing, uh, and all the wiring diagrams and um, current outputs and voltage that is going to work off of our on here on the back end um, you can't make it out on this camera if I just twist it a little bit you can just make out there's an LED in the back and there's a small hole there on the back and that's where we're going to be able to change the sensitivity of this bad boy so we'll start off with these three guys I'll show you the wiring diagram that will then we'll come back and we'll wire these guys up all right guys here's our wiring diagram <clears throat> so for this guy We've got uh, the 24 volts. That's going to go to, obviously, our 24 volt connection. We've got zero volts to the zero volt connection. These guys, again, are going to correspond to my positive being my brown conductor, my negative being the blue conductor, and then the output, Festo has labeled as Q1. That's going to be your black, regardless if it's PNP or NPN, and that's going to go to our light. This light is simulating our input to our PLC. This one here looks like it's a PNP or a sourcing input in that we've got the positive coming over to the switch. So our capacitive sensor is basically a switch. It's switching the positive, bringing that positive to the PLC. PLC already has a reference to the negative. Excellent, let's go back to the lab and take a look at how to hook this guy up. Okay guys, so let's go through how to wire this guy up. So we got to feed this guy with 24 volts. So we've got a 24 volt DC power supply here. That 24 volt is right here. I'm bringing that 24 volts over to my capacitive sensor. And then from Q1, I'm going over to my light. The other side of the light, I'm connecting up to my negative. So these guys right here for my 24 volt power supply, this would be my brown for my positive. This would be my blue for my negative. 
and my output out in the field from Q1 would be black. Okay, so I've got 24 volts going to the capacitive sensor, output of there going to light, and to complete the circuit, I'm going to have that negative going back. Okay, let's take a closer look at the slider now. So you can see the slider here. I'm going to put this guy right up against the, the zero mark right here. So the back of the slider is at zero. And I'm going to jam the capacitive sensor right up against, in this case, the number five for the galvanized steel. At that point, any distance that's measured here will be the exact same distance between the front of the sensor and whatever piece of plastic or metal you have in your positioning slide. Now, previously, before we zoomed in, uh, the light was not on, and now the light is on. Excellent. So, we can back this guy off a little bit. Light goes off, and then when we bring the number five, then you can see our light turns on. Sweet. So now we're all set up to look at different types of metals and plastics and wood to see whether the capacitive sensor sees each of those. All right, guys, so what we've done so far is we've taken that uh, steel calibrating plate number five and we placed it in there. Um, we'll go back uh, because we're going to look at that one if we scroll down here a little bit. We're going to look at the galvanized steel, the stainless steel, aluminum, brass, copper, the cardboard, the plastic, and the wood. So uh, what we're going to do is with that galvanized steel, you can actually start right here. And what we're going to see is we're going to look at where the switch on point is and the switch off point, And we'll look at our hysteresis. These are the values that I got from the manufacturer. Um, these are with the digital calipers so they can keep track of. I mean, there's no way I can see that it's 0.75 mils hysteresis. The hysteresis is the difference between the switch on point and the switch off point. So we'll notice that uh, we should find that when we go back to the lab, uh, we'll see that the galvanized steel, stainless steel, aluminum, brass, and copper are all able to be seen, uh, but we'll probably have a hard time with the cardboard, the black plastic, and the wood's gonna have to be basically right on top of the sensor, okay? It looks like the, the switch on point is gonna be around four, and the switch off point is gonna be around five for most of them, okay? So let's go back to the, uh, the lab, and we'll take a look at each of these different components. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna start off with number five. Number five is the galvanized steel. And what I'll do is I'll back her off a little bit, so it's turning off, and I'll slowly bring it forwards with the, the thumb wheel here. And at that point, it's turning on. Excellent. So if we zoom in here, it looks like that capacitive sensor is seeing, wow, like we said, about four mils away. Where am I getting that four mils? Well, the back of the slider is at four mils, and that corresponds to the distance that's right here. Okay. If I back it off uh, just a touch here, guys, Right, like half a, half a mil to a mil, then you can see that it's turning on at four and basically turning off at four and a half or five. Excellent. Okay, so capacitive sensor can, can look at a piece of metal, a piece of galvanized steel for number five. Excellent. Okay, next one we're going to do is uh, number six. Number six is what? Number six is the stainless steel. All right, let's drop that bad boy in there and we'll see whether it can see the stainless steel as well, okay? So, we'll just um, see if I can put my finger here, okay? Oh, there we go. So, again, around four mils, the stainless steel is turning on, and around five or four and a half, it is turning off. So, stainless steel, a capacitive sensor can see as well. Excellent. So, it looks like capacitive sensor can see different types of metals, okay? Can it see aluminum? Number seven is aluminum. We'll drop that guy in and we will bring it a little bit closer. Nice. So they're all turning on. All the metals are basically turning on around four mils away from the sensor. So it looks like we've got the galvanized steel. We've got the stainless steel that was seen. We've seen the aluminum that the capacitive sensor is seeing as well. Again, when you put a piece of metal in front of there, it is increasing the surface area of the plate of the capacitor, so it changes the capacitance and trips it off. Uh, then we're gonna look at brass and copper. So brass is number eight. I'll drop that bad boy in there. Okay, and let's see if it can see a brass. Oh, nice, right on. So it can see brass as well, okay? Around that same distance of four mils, okay? And then finally copper, well, it saw all the other different types of metals. So let's see if it sees copper and if there's a distance 
difference either. No, around four mils, the copper is being seen as well. Beauty. So all of the different metals uh, from five through nine there are being seen. Sweet. Okay, so the next one is uh, cardboard. We got to grab uh, number 10 for the cardboard. So where's that guy? Right here. There we go. So number 10 for the piece of cardboard that's mounted on the plastic back plate. We'll drop that guy in there. Now from the manufacturer, they said that they weren't able to see that cardboard. So cardboard has a, a low dielectric. And if we push this, oh, so it looks like I can see that one, but it's uh, quite a bit closer. So my capacitive sensor, and again, by changing the sensitivity in the back, different people in the lab are going to have different uh, outputs, right? So let's see, with this guy, uh, <clears throat> we'll take a look, and the distance for the piece of cardboard for me is around two mils away from that sensor. It's almost got to be right on top of the, uh, the sensor for it to pick up. Okay, next one is uh, number 16, uh, the black plastic. So let's see if this guy can be picked up by our capacitive sensor. All right, so we're two mils away from the sensor and it's still not picking it up. Let's see if we jam it right up against the sensor, whether we can get this guy to turn on. Okay, so the black plastic is basically turning on. Look at that, look how close it's gotta be in order to, uh, to turn on that sensor. So at that point, we're like one and a half mils away from the sensor there. For the black plastic again the black plastic has a low dielectric very close to the dielectric of air so it's hard for this capacitive sensor to pick this up okay we'll finish off with uh, number 17 piece of wood now this is a dry piece of wood which we saw earlier has in the other video has a uh, low dielectric oh, it picked up at when it's jammed right up against but look at that we're just going to be at let's see Looks like the, the piece of wood is being picked up at like two mils away from the sensor. So again, because the wood has a low dielectric, you have to have it very close to the, the sensor. Whereas all the other different uh, metals that we looked at, so if we just organize all the pieces that we just looked at, all the metals were being able to be picked up. Come on, buddy. Picked up at uh, four mils. Uh, but these ones here had to be uh, very close to the sensor due to their low dielectric value. All right, guys, so there's a number of questions to answer at the back of the lab there. Uh, you can do that on your own. We'll just finish off again by looking at different dielectric contents. So the reference for all these guys for the capacitive sensor is uh, air. So it has a dielectric of one. Uh, and then stuff like the wood was very hard to see. So you can see that this value is very close to the value for air. Um, and then what else do we have? Uh, anything to do with the, the paper was very low as well. Right? If we looked at uh, the metals, then the metals have a high dielectric value and are able to be seen easily. On our next, next lab, we'll look at different thicknesses of materials as well. Uh, and then we'll see, uh, we'll look at liquid wa water level sensing as well. And you can see that water with a high dielectric value is going to be seen at a greater distance. All right, guys, that ends uh, lab number seven. Thanks very much.